Pastor Julian here with Central's Devotion for today. We're going to look at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 32 to 34. Now let me set up uh, what goes on before this. Jesus delivers the Sermon on the Mount in, chapter, in, in Matthew, uh, chapters 5, 6, and 7. This is Jesus' uh, most profound and famous sermon with really incredible teaching, and where he also declares that he has come to fulfill the law. So, after the Sermon on the Mount, in chapter 8, Jesus goes on from there, and you see him do some miraculous things. He heals a leper. You see, you see him... Uh, calming a storm. You see him uh, conducting other healings of demon-possessed men. Chapter 9, you see Jesus uh, forgiving sins and healing a paralytic. You see him uh, dining with sinners and tax collectors who Jesus says these are who I came for. The, those who have sinned and who are sinners are the ones who need the doctor. They need me, not those who are righteous. And so then you see Jesus go on and start healing even more. He, he brings a little girl who had died back to life. He uh, heals a, a woman who couldn't stop bleeding, uh, blind men, and and now, he's conducting another healing in our verses here. This is the last one, last healing of the litany of healings that start, and, and miracles that you see um, after the Sermon on the Mount. And this is right before Jesus sends out the 12 uh, disciples to go and share the gospel and, and do as Jesus has done. Let me share uh, what it says. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man, who had been mute, spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. Jesus had made his deity known through his miracles. And indeed, the crowd was correct. Nothing like this had ever been seen before in Israel. It hadn't been seen before anywhere in the world, where people who had these uh, afflictions were being healed by someone. And, and so you see Jesus here, Casting out a demon, the man is able to speak, and the crowd is in awe. And, and they should be, because the incarnate God is right before them in Jesus Christ. And you would think that most of all, the religious leaders of the day would recognize that God was in their presence, but they didn't. And it was ugly. Let me continue reading on verse 34. But the Pharisees said, It is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. Wow. God is in your presence, and you accuse him of being evil and being uh, an instrument of the devil. Is there any greater insult to God? He wasn't doing anything that he had done out of selfishness. Because in the next, in the next uh, uh, paragraph, it talks about Jesus having compassion, having compassion on the people of Israel and all those that he's encountered. So he's done this out of compassion and love, not out of selfishness out of humility, out of care. And the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, 
don't recognize this. I think it's because they're jealous, they're self-righteous, and they don't want anybody following Jesus. They want them following them. Let me encourage you that there are people out there who are jealous, who are self-righteous, who think they know it all, um, and who just might be flat out annoyed by you. And so when you live your life for Jesus, when you, when you stand out like Jesus did in the world, instead of fitting in, you're going to get a lot of naysayers. You're going to get a lot of people um, saying things about you, maybe to your face, maybe behind your back, but you're going to have a lot of, um, you're going to have people giving you problems. But let me encourage you. Jesus is Lord. He is God. And he loves you and has compassion on you. And there is nothing that you are going through that he hasn't been through. So continue to go out. Live your life for him. And no matter what anybody else says. God bless you.